how to move the wrists in the backswing. It's a big point of confusion for a lot of players. Most of them are moving them incorrectly throughout the motion and therefore that leads to a slew of ball striking errors. If you feel like you're struggling with this concept and you're not quite sure how they should work, well stay tuned, this video is really gonna help. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here at the Joondalup Resort. Before we get stuck in, as always, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell if you haven't already, so you get access to all these free great tips coming your way. On top of that, just a little note, I am doing personalized online coaching, so if you are looking to improve your game in a remote fashion, working with me online, 24 seven access to help you improve your technique and your skills in this game, well then we can certainly help you on your way. If you're interested in that, please click the link down below and we can get started on what you're doing. Alrighty, in today's session, we're gonna be talking about how the wrists work in the golf swing. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about how they should work in the backswing. Now there's a multitude of ways that the wrists can work. We're gonna show you in a simple fashion, first of all, starting off with, is the varying angles that they can work. So starting off here, facing the camera, our wrists can work in an upward fashion, they can work in a downward fashion, they can move to the right facing the camera like this, and then to the left. We're gonna be specifically focusing on what the left wrist is doing today for the right-hander, opposite if you're a left-hander. So if I was to move my wrist in this backward fashion like this, in the golf swing, that would be what we call a bowing action. And if we were to move it the other way, this here, well, this would be called a cupping. Now, this is very important to understand because how we move our wrists directly affects the way that we control the club face. And this is important because the club face is the one thing that hits the golf ball. And our hands are our one point of contact with our club. So assuming you've got a functional grip, and don't get me wrong, there's plenty of matchups that you can have with specific grip styles that can still get the job done. But we're talking purely about an orthodox position, so assuming that your grip is in order. If you're not sure about your grip, well then you can go back through my previous videos, plenty of videos there. If you're struggling with a weak or a strong grip, we can make sure that we get that sorted for you first. But today, once we've done that, assuming you've got that grip, we're gonna be talking about how the wrists need to work as you take the golf club away, and some common misconceptions that a lot of players have on exactly how they should move them. So first of all, let's start off in the address position, and we're gonna set up to this ball here, and we're gonna talk about some of the ways that we could move the wrists back, and our little checkpoint is just gonna be in this halfway back position when the club shaft is parallel, and you can see that the club head is in line with my hands looking at the target. So what we would be looking for an orthodox position of the golf club at that phase of the swing would be that the lead wrist would be relatively flat. So flat meaning the back of the hand and the forearm is in one line like this, not cupped so it's hinged upwards or two bowed, which is hidden downwards. So then if I get into this position, we get back into this halfway parallel position with a flat left wrist, assuming we had a very functional address position where we can see that the club face is not straight up and down, it is slightly tipped on an angle, which would be actually matching my spine angle. And this would be considered a very functional position to be in by that stage of the swing. Common errors that we see would be too much of a rolling of the club. You can see the club face is quite open. Also look at my wrist pointing more up towards the sky. The lead wrist is cupped. And then also if we drag the club behind us, once again, pointing too much down to the ground, or we can actually just start to manipulate it going outwards in a various or numerous amount of ways as well. So as we can see, the wrists move in a multitude of directions. So how we control them plays a huge role on our ability to square that club face back at the ball. And we want to do that because club face is king in regards to starting direction. We can have a slight shape to our golf swing, meaning we can swing out to in or into out. But if our club face is varying a lot throughout the motion, it's incredibly difficult to get your ball started on your intended line. Hence why today we're talking about the wrists, assuming you've got that functional grip. So from the address position, what else can go wrong? Well, even if we get into a reasonable backswing position here, from the top of the swing, what a lot of players are trying to do is increase lag. Now, lag is defined by the typical golfer as the angle of the club shaft relative 
to where it would be if it was flat. So this would be considered a lot of lag and this would be considered no lag or casting as we call it. But this however is a big misconception. It's also a lot of what you see on TV isn't what's actually happening. So for example, let's use a player like Sergio Garcia. Now most players would assume that Sergio Garcia has a bucket load of lag coming down into impact. And rightly so, by this angle here, you can see that this looks quite acute. However, if I actually straighten up that angle, so instead of it being laid off, as we can see in the down the line position, and I actually straighten up that angle, well, you can see it's actually not as acute as we first thought. Now, the common association with lag is that's gonna get more power. However, most players are trying to do it incorrectly by trying to drag the arms, they're trying to drag the wrists in front of their body, and that just causes a slew of errors with how this club face is actually staying controlled throughout the motion. And the most common is that when players do it and they try and drag the wrists back into the ball and try to create this lag, they create a cupping of the lead wrist. So if I set up to this golf ball, I get to a very functional position at the top that I'd be happy with, and then we try and drag that down in front thinking lag's a good thing. Well, we start to see a cupping of the lead wrist. This is what I was talking about. And the effect on the club face is that it opens a lot. So then by the time that we get to impact, if I was staying in my posture, rotating and shifting properly through the ball, the club face would be aiming a long way to the right. And we know that's not a good thing. And that's gonna get the ball started to the right. So once again, not only is it important to have those wrists working correctly in the backswing, but then also in the downswing, making sure they're in a proficient position as well. But for the sake of today's video, we're gonna be talking specifically just how the wrists are working in the takeaway and the top of the swing. Because if we can get into a relatively functional position at the top of the swing, and then we don't try and manipulate the club too much, well, we've got a good chance of getting that club face back square and that's gonna to lead to some more compressed straighter shots. So let's talk about how we do this from the down the line position. Well, if I'm setting up to the golf ball and I'm a player that sometimes the club goes out there, sometimes it moves around, there's a good chance you're manipulating it with your wrists and how the wrists need to work. Well, that can be highlighted by a very simple exercise. And the exercise is as follows. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stand up with the golf club out in front of us. We're gonna get it relatively level with the ground pointing at our belly button. Now from this position here, what we need to do is keep our wrists in place and we're going to hinge the golf club back into this position here. Now we can see that the shaft is level with the ground. My lead wrist is relatively flat with my forearm. And to get that position, what I've done is I've allowed a little bit of rotation of the left forearm and the right forearm, and my right elbow has softened. Then if I was to simply pivot back into a backswing position, and then seeing as golf is played on the ground, tilted down towards the ground, well, now I'm in a great top of swing position. So by going through this exercise, it really highlights exactly how the wrists need to move and then what we need to do to get them to the top of the swing. Once we've established and created these specific angles, so a flat left wrist for the right-hander and a right forearm, which is softened and rolled and rotated slightly, and then I simply turn and use my body to get to the top, I tilt down, well, now I'm in a great spot to deliver that golf club back to the ball. And if this is something that you struggle with, you look at your swing, sometimes the wrist is cut, sometimes it's bowed. We can see that a lot of players get really long swings by getting this lead wrist cupped into this position. You can see that has a direct effect on the club face. Well, that just causes all sorts of inconsistencies on how we're gonna get that club back to the ball. So once again, creating some sort of proficiency to how we move that golf club in the first takeaway position and then all the way to the top of the swing just makes your life a lot easier on the way down. So once we've done this exercise a few times, we've stood up, we've let the wrist roll, we've got a flat left wrist for the right-hander, we then turn our chest back and then we get into this position, we simply just wanna try and recreate that same feeling to the top of the swing. So as you can see, the assumption that most players are trying to hinge the wrists up too much, they're trying to get too much angle, then they drag the angle down, all that does is wreak havoc the club face and it's going to lead to inconsistent shots. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As always, if you've got any questions, please ask me below. A real helpful lesson on how to move the wrists and how that affects the club face. Definitely something players of all levels need to be aware of and continually work on to ensure that they're getting the most efficiency out of their golf swing. Once again, if you haven't already, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.